Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be DIYing a few different crafts using some polymer clay. years I've been seeing so many different crafts using this type of clay and I've been wanting to experiment with it to see what types of crafts that I could make so that's what we'll be doing today basically you can mold these clays into any types of designs that you would like and depending on which type of clay you purchase will depend on the drying method but once it has dried it will be a hard solid piece the type that I got is called polymer clay and this one you do have to bake in the oven so like I mentioned there are different types you can get an air dry clay which once you have molded it you can then just leave it out and it will eventually dry over time but I did get black white pink and blue so I'm really excited to work with these I will be using different techniques so some will be solid and some will have a mix of colors also you can add paint if you did want to add a color that way so it's definitely up to you on what you would like for your final design we'll be making a ring holder a coaster a small bowl which you can also use for jewelry as well some garden tags a keychain and last we'll be making a photo holder so we'll be making a variety of different things I wanted to make a lot of completely different things to see what works best using this clay so that I can give you guys my best opinion on it so let's just jump right into the video all you will need for this is your clay of choice that you would like to use like I mentioned I'm using polymer clay and I also have here an oven safe pan that I will be putting everything on to pop in the oven all together and then I just have a small bowl and a coaster and of course these are optional because I will be using these as templates so I'm first going to start off with a ring holder and speaking of jewelry today's video is sponsored by moon magic jewelry and this is an amazing brand that carries the most beautiful high quality gemstones at an affordable price which is always a plus normally if you're trying to buy a really high quality gemstone piece of jewelry it's typically pretty expensive whereas their prices are unmatchable with each item sold one tree is planted so I already love them just for supporting that cause each piece of their jewelry is unique unique and handcrafted so no two gemstones are the same which I absolutely love so I'm going to show you guys two of the pieces that I received from them the first one is this sterling silver bracelet which is called the Amara bracelet I love how simple and dainty it is and I figured it would be perfect to wear as an anklet also their items do come in really beautiful boxes as well as these really nice felt inserts if you are planning to get something as a gift they are perfect in the box that they come in and then here I have one of their moonstone rings which is called the link light ring and this one is gorgeous I would highly recommend this because not only are you getting beautiful high quality jewelry but it's also extremely affordable and you are planting one tree per item which I think is amazing so I highly recommend checking out moon magic jewelry if you are interested all of their information will be listed down in the description so for the ring holder I'm gonna use white and baby blue and try to mix them and swirl them together to give it a marble effect let's see how it goes I'm excited to see if this is easy to work with because it does feel like this clay is pretty hard maybe once I start working with it and it gets warm from my fingers maybe it's a little bit easier it's already not peeling that great so as you can see this clay does come with little perforated lines in there so I took one line of the white and then one of the blue I'm gonna kind of roll them out like you would a play-doh snake as you can see I have the white and the blue side by side and I'm just going to twist them together not sure what I'm doing at all to be honest with you I am just going to keep twisting it and pulling it and doing different things to see if it ends up looking marbled this method seems to work so far so it's starting to kind of look like marbled so I'm thinking that this is the best that we're gonna get for now so now I'm going to start forming it into basically a cone shape so that we can stack our rings right on top how do I even do that there's my base. Now I just cut off a piece from the top as you can see here and I stuck it on the bottom. So now that I have kind of a triangle cone shape going on here, I'm going to start rolling it a little. I did get a triangle cone shape, but it's a little bit tall than I wanted. Now I'm gonna roll it just a little bit to make the edges more smooth. You don't wanna put too much pressure on it because once you apply pressure, it starts flattening it out and making it longer. 
And you do want to make sure that the bottom is level and flat. You do want it to stand up straight unless you want yours to go sideways, but I don't. All right, so I have my shape and I'm liking how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and test it with the ring and see if it's a good enough shape. Ah, are you serious? That was kind of easy. Not gonna lie. I'm gonna set this one on the side on my pan. And in case you're curious on if these shrink or rise when you bake them, like I mentioned, I've never done this. So I have absolutely no idea what happens in the oven. I make them and then see once I pull them out the oven, if anything happens to the size of them. It actually looks marbled, which I didn't think would work, but it did work. So now I'm gonna move on to the next item. We're gonna make a DIY coaster. For this one, I want to use my black clay and I'll probably try to put little feet on the bottom of the coaster and kind of experiment with that and see how attaching clay to clay will work with baking it in the oven. Is it gonna be one piece? Is it gonna break off easily? What's gonna happen? Let's see. I think I'm going to use the whole block for this coaster. So I feel like you need like a rolling pin or something for this, which I don't have. And in case you're curious, which I was, if this stains your hands or the table that you work on, it definitely doesn't. This is black and my table, as you can see, is white. So I would definitely be able to notice if I saw some black on there and I don't. Update, I have this metal bottle, which is round all the way around. So I am going to use this as a rolling pin to roll my clay out. This works amazing, so much better than using my hands. This is gonna be a pretty thin coaster, so it is gonna end up stretching out to the size I need, but if you do want it thicker, I would recommend doing two or even two and a half packs of clay. It's kind of easy to work with, but I don't like how it rips apart and I don't like how thick it is. It's hard to push down with your hands, but look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and put the coaster upside down right on top and cut all of the excess off of the edges. So here's what I'm left with. There are some pretty rough edges, so I am just gonna go around and push on the edge to make it a little bit more seamless. So now I'm gonna do one final roll with my bottle right over the top to flatten it out. And it is definitely not a perfect circle. I'm not gonna lie to you guys and pretend like it is. So this is as close to a perfect circle as I could get it. So now I wanna try to make some little feet to put on the bottom of the coaster. I'm gonna take a little piece of the white and basically roll it up into a little ball. So now I have my four circles, which I'm gonna use as the feet on the bottom of the coaster. I'm really interested to see how this works because of course all four of these are not exactly perfect size. So I'm just going to stick them directly onto the coaster. So here is how it ends up looking. I'm going to bake it upside down so that the top of the coaster is perfectly flat. And moving on to the next item, we're gonna make a DIY jewelry dish. So for this, I'm gonna use a small bowl as a template so that we can put the clay right over it and kind of shape it. I do recommend using a bowl that is oven safe because I will be baking the clay directly on this bowl so that it does keep its shape while it bakes. So for this I'm going to do the marble technique that we did for the ring holder except I'm going to use white and pink for this one. So I'm alternating pink and white. I did roll them out and now I'm just going to twist them together and then keep mixing them until they are to where I like the way that it looks. So now I have it rolled up into one big ball. I'm gonna go ahead and take my metal container and begin rolling it out until it is the size that I want. So now that it's all rolled out, as you can see, it looks so pretty. I'm so happy with how the marble ended up coming out. So whatever side you want as the inside of your bowl is the side that you're gonna put face down. And once you've put it on your bowl, we're gonna begin shaping it around the bowl. And personally, the effect that I'm going for are uneven edges. I just think it gives it a really cool effect on top, especially because I'm just using it for a few rings. I don't have to worry about anything falling out. So I did keep my edges uneven. If you do want it to be perfect, I would recommend cutting it out 
out like we did the coaster before placing it on your bowl. But once you have it placed and shaped the way that you want, we are finished with the bowl and I'm going to place it just like this on the pan to bake. So the next item we're gonna make are some garden tags. And if you have been following me for a while, then you would know that I absolutely love growing things in my garden, but specifically that I don't ever use garden tags. I just use popsicle sticks. I write the name on them, stick them in the garden, and they last literally like forever in your garden. So I haven't ever changed that method, but I do have a few fruits and vegetables that I have consistently in my garden. So I would like to make some permanent tags for those. And for this, you will need some stampers if you don't have a really pretty handwriting. If you do, you can always use the tip of a pencil, maybe that's not sharpened, and write the words directly into the clay. So I'm using white clay so that it stands out a lot in the garden. You can always use a really bright color if you'd like that as well. But I like to keep my garden pretty minimal as far as colors. So I don't want to have any distracting garden tags in the garden. So I'm just using white. It's bright. I'll be able to see it, but it's still going to be pretty neutral in the garden. So I just went ahead and rolled it up into one big ball. And now I'm going to roll it out with the bottle. So now that we have a flat piece, we're going to go ahead and take the letters and write our different names of our herbs and veggies directly onto the clay. Let's do squash. Oh, too hard. So you don't want to push too hard with these. And once you have the name on it, we can then just take some scissors and cut that out so that it is perfectly straight lines, unlike our coaster. And I did cut it on an angle, as you can see, so that it is pointy at the bottom and it's easy to stick into the dirt when we go to put it in our garden. Depending on how it looks after I put it in the oven, if it is really hard to read, I will go over it with a little bit of paint or a Sharpie so that it's easier to read. I'm gonna stick it on my pan and make a few more before I move on to the next item. So the next thing we're gonna try to make is a keychain and I'm gonna mix all four colors together and see what ends up happening and how it looks. I think it even looks pretty cool just like this, to be honest. There's already a little hole to make a keychain, and it almost looks like one of those rainbow lollipops that I would get like as a kid, or even like a unicorn horn. Like, how cool does that look? Here's how it ended up coming out. It looks so cool with all four colors. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out the shape that I want for my keychain. I'm just doing a rectangle. I'm just gonna add a little hole right on top so that we can stick a key ring in it. I'm just going to take the tip of my scissors and stick it right through where I want my key ring to go. So here is the keychain with the little hole right on top. And if you are interested, after you bake it, you can paint like your name or something on the top if you wanted to. And the last item for this video that we're gonna make is a picture holder. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the marbled clay that we just made for the key ring, since I do have a lot left over, and roll it up into a ball. And now I'm just going to take something flat. You can use like a butter knife, a mail opener, anything like that that's flat on top. And I'm just gonna make a little slit directly on the top. You can even use a pair of scissors, which is actually what I'm going to use. I'm just gonna cut a little slit directly on the top of the ball. So I am gonna make two of these because I do wanna experiment with adding paint on your clay before baking it, which I feel like this paint might be flammable, so this might not be a good idea, but I do wanna try it because if it does work, then I want you guys to be able to do it at home. I'm gonna take what's left over of the white and roll it up into a ball just like we did the last one. So once once you have it rolled up into a ball, I am gonna put it on the table and kind of push it down just a little bit so that it is just a little bit flatter on the bottom. So when we do put it on a table, it does sit perfectly flat. I'm taking a wet paintbrush and I'm going to dip that into some black paint. Once you've added your paint on top, we're again gonna take our scissors and cut a slit right on top for our picture to sit in. So here's how all of our DIYs ended up coming out. I'm really quickly going to bake them at 275 degrees for 15 minutes, and I'll see you guys once they're finished baking. Okay, straight out the oven. Ow! <laughs> Here are all of our pieces and 
I'm not too sure if you're supposed to like wait for them to cool off or if they are just ready to go. I'm just going to take them off of the pan so that they can start to cool. So here are all of my final pieces and I'm very curious to see how they ended up coming out and which ones work and which ones don't. So let's just jump right in. Starting with the coaster, which I was most curious to see how this ended up working. And wow, okay. So when you touch the balls, they very easily come off the bottom. So that technique definitely does not work to place something right on top of it. Here's the base of the coaster. It is... I wanted to test how hard it ended up drying and not very hard as you can see I went to go bend it and it peeled right apart so the last test is to test the condensation of the cup so I want to see if the water either sits on top of the coaster or if it soaks in so let me go get a cup of water oh my gosh wait this is so cool so the water basically just sits right on top of the coaster so that definitely works if you do want to use these as a coaster the only thing i would recommend is obviously not trying to bend it because it will snap and break the next thing is the ring holder and this ended up working perfectly i'm trying to push on it and you can't mold it or push on it and reshape it at all so it definitely works when you bake it as far as shapes and sizes of the clay once you bake it everything does stay exactly the same so you don't have to worry about anything shrinking or enlarging when you go to put it in the oven so i would highly recommend trying the ring holder next up i want to see how the bowl ended up coming out so it feels really nice and smooth on the outside i'm hoping you didn't have to put any oil or something inside so that this comes out easily because i didn't put anything i just stuck it right on the bowl as you guys saw i don't want to pull it because it may end up breaking but i'm pretty sure you should have put something in between i probably would have put some wax paper or even some oil like vegetable oil just so that it doesn't dry onto the bowl as you saw with the coaster it does break pretty easily no so the bowl does work um definitely put something in between because it will end up breaking when you try to pull it apart as you can see there's a big crack and this piece that completely broke off but overall it looks really really pretty i love how the marble effect ended up coming out i love the uneven edge i just think it gives it a really pretty handmade effect to it and also it's definitely a hard enough material to use as a bowl so yeah the bowl came out amazing i think i'm going to make another one because this is just so adorable to use as a jewelry holder next up for the garden tags i absolutely love these they stand up nice and straight they're definitely tough enough to stick into your dirt and i like that you're still able to perfectly see the words that i put in here so i'm definitely not going to paint over it or write over it because i like how discreet the letters look on here so that they don't stand out a lot when i have them in the garden bed and i'll be making a few more for all of the rest of the veggies that i have next up we have our keychain which came out adorable i would recommend maybe painting or drawing or adding stickers maybe your initials your name this almost looks like a little frame so even if you printed a tiny picture and mod podged it to the front of this i think that would look absolutely adorable so here's how it looks on a key ring and it feels pretty sturdy like it's going to hold up i'm sure over time pieces may end up chipping off of it depending on how rough you are with your key ring but overall this is a really cute idea i absolutely love this even if you made these as party favors or gifts or something like that they are so cute and you can make so many with a pack of the clay lastly we have our photo holders so the one that i paint obviously the paint ended up drying because i put it in 275 degree oven so if you do want to add your paint before putting it in the oven you definitely can do that and now we are going to test how the slits work as far as putting a photo inside and as you can see it works perfectly you can even use them as name tags or table numbers so if you do have a wedding a party or something where you need to have little name tags so definitely get creative with all of these diys i absolutely love how these ended up coming out i also love how easy they were to make it would be a lot of fun to make with your friends family your kids this is perfect for all different ages and i'd love to hear your feedback on what your favorite diy was in this video or what you would have molded with this clay i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're not already and i'll see y'all in my next video bye guys